Anthony Grasso here, bringing you financial news you can use. In this video, I'm going to do a stock analysis on Zynga. I will go over a summary of the company, its product offerings, recent news, financials, analyst projections, and give it my buy, hold, or sell recommendations. So let's get right into it. So uh, Zynga is a provider of social game services. The company develops, markets, and operates social games as live services played on mobile platforms such as your iPhone operating system or your Android operating system right here. I got my Android up. The company has developed a range of social games, including games uh, in the slots, Words with Friends, Zenga Poker, and everybody knows the term Farmville. It operates its games as live services and updates them with new features. It analyzes the data generated by its players' games and social interactions that guide the creation of new content and features. The company operates its games as live services that are available anytime and anywhere. The company invests in game categories including social casino, casual act action strategy, and invest express. Now social casino includes Zynga Poker and its slot games uh, such as the Hit It Rich slots, Wizard of Odd slots, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory slots, and Black Diamond Casino. Zynga became the biggest mobile gaming company in the United States in August, a dethroning Activision Blizzard after it acquired another mobile gaming specialist peak for $1.8 billion. It followed that up with the takeover of Rolik in October. So let's look at some news. So the company recently announced that Harry Potter Puzzles and Spells has launched in South Korea, officially licensed from Warner Brothers Games and published under the Portkey Games label. This award-winning mobile game has begun rolling out to players in South Korea, fully localized in Korea. So they're definitely expanding into other territories and countries. That's definitely good news. But let's go ahead and look at some fundamentals while, while we're here. Now, the company has a market capitalization of about... 10.98 uh 10.87 billion dollars the revenues have been steadily increasing since 2016 to about 1.3 billion dollars in 2019. the estimated earnings per share for 2020 is expected to be about 37 cents a share and increase to 42 cents a share in in 2021 Earnings forecasts are uh, forecasted to grow 66.7% per year. By the end of 2021, it is projected to have $2.6 billion in revenue with an earnings of $31.4 million. By the end of 2025, get this, it is projected to have $3.5 billion in revenue with $779 million in earnings. So that is a huge potential for this company going into the future. So I see it basically right now as a below market value. It's currently trading at, I don't know, $10 and 35 cents a share, but I'll get into all of that on my thoughts if it's a buy holder or sell. It's definitely uh, jumped up here a little bit and it's been trading uh, around the $8 mark uh, not too long ago, back in November, and it recently had that jump up here. Uh, so Zynga is forecast to become profitable over the next three years, which is considered above average market growth. Now, the earnings trend Zynga is unprofitable, but has reduced its losses over the five years at a rate of 8.1% per year. Let me bring it up back over here. Now, it's um, short-term liabilities. Uh, the short-term assets of $1 billion do not cover its short-term liabilities of one2 but that's not too bad. Now, the debt level, the debt to in, uh, equity ratio of 20.9% is considered satisfactory. Now, while it's unprofitable, Zynga has sufficient cash runway for more than three years. So if it maintains its current positive uh, cash flow level, I'm not too worried about it. And, but we do have to be worried about dilution of the shares. So shareholders have been diluted in the past year, with total shares outstanding growing by 14.1%. So that's kind of significant. So what do the analysts say? So majority of the analysts are currently a strong buy on this stock. A few are a hold, and I found one that is a sell. The ownership breakdown of the company is 6.6% individual insiders, 77.3% institutions, and the general public of 16.2%. So majority of this is owned by institutions, and there hasn't been any, any buying or selling by um, uh, by the insiders. I think the CEO unloaded a uh, little bit of shares, uh, but that was the only one I could find uh, recently. But let's uh, let's let's look at some ratios of this company and see exactly what where their strengths are and weaknesses. So looking at the financial strength analysis, uh, the debt to total capital ratio of uh, 17.32 percent 
is in line with the entertainment industry's norm. The company may have difficulty though making interest payments, so that's a little bit of a concern. The interest coverage ratio is 19.33 times, is among the highest in the industry, but shows that earnings from day-to-day -day activities are too small to service the debt. All right, so that's kind of a concern for us. Valuation analysis, because the most recent earnings of Zynga are not available right now, uh, they'll, they'll come out probably a uh, month, two, two months from now. The price to sales and the price to book ratios are the most appropriate valuation measures. Therefore, Zynga seems expensive with a price to sales ratio of 5.46 times above the entertainment industry medium uh, price to sales ratio of 4.43 times, which is supported by a price to book ratio of 3.92 times that is above the industry medium of 3.46 times now let's look at some profitability analysis here now based on its operating gross and net margin zynga converts an above median percentage of its revenues to profits compared to other companies in the industry uh, uh and entertainment industry however the company is most like others in the industry is losing money on an operating basis right now now let's look at the growth rate ana analysis. Recently, the earnings trend at Zynga has been weak. Over the past 12 months, the company has lost 38 cents a share compared to the prior period profitability results. However, though, this performance was to be expected as the typical company in entertainment industry also posted weaker results right now. So am I a buy, hold, or sell recommendation on Zynga here? But, but before I get into that, I have to go over my thoughts. Let's talk about the elephant in the room right now, COVID-19 and the effect of increased engagement. I feel everybody loves a good game and I think that they will keep on playing. Now the bears right now are saying, well, when COVID-19 is over with, a lot, lot, lot less people are gonna be on your social gaming platforms. All you no, know, all these kids around there, they're always on their iPhones, iPads, uh, all their electronic devices. So I don't think that's gonna have a major effect on this. So the, the company has to find ways to keep momentum. When the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, there will be a pullback on users on the platform, maybe, I doubt it. Now the company did complete two acquisitions in 2020 that add more titles and players for the company to monetize, that's huge. Now let's look at management targets uh, in Asia. As we shown in that news article back, uh, back uh, they, they were going in Korea. Now they're going to be increasing the use of smartphones all over the world. And an investment in Zynga is a bet that they're saying, well, because there's going to be increase in smartphones all over the globe, there's going to be increase of people on our platform. This has been fundamental to Zynga's growth so far. And now that we have a rollout of the 5G cellular speed in the United States, it's only going to go up and up and up. This should only make mobile gaming more appealing to players in hot markets like Asia. New technologies will not only make games look and play better, but faster connection speeds specifically benefit this kind of social games that Zynga produces. I feel that uh, this would be a catalyst for Zynga's international expansion. So I believe on the international front, they will have solid growth. That is my projection for growth of Zynga in international markets on the years to come. During the company's third quarter conference call, the CEO, Frank uh, Gibiu, <laughs> said, as the industry continues to expand and evolve, we are investing in new markets, categories, and technologies that will have the ability to increase Zynga's total addressable market and further accelerate our growth over the long term. Zynga has already expanded its empires and puzzles game in Asia during 2019. Now, penetrating this fast-growing market also seems to have been part of the rationale for acquiring Peak for about $1.85 billion last year. In 2020, Peak's Toon Blast became one of the top grossing games in Japan. Can you believe it? I don't know that game because I'm not a young young gun no more. International bookings made up 38% of Zynga's business in the third quarter and grew 49% year over year. But Zynga is also experiencing strong growth at home with US bookings up 66% year over year in the last quarter. So Zynga has uh, more acquisition opportunities in the coming future. Over the last four years, the company spent Net cash outlay of 1.7 billion on acquisitions. Investors should expect more deals in the in the future to come. Following the recent acquisitions of Peak and Rolik, Zynga ended the third quarter with 31 million daily active users and 83 million monthly active users, the highest levels the company has seen in more than six years. Uh, management now expects a full year bookings for 2020 to be up about 43 percent 
uh, year over year reaching 2.2 billion. Most of Zynga's bookings came from in-game spending. So maintaining healthy player engagement levels is important to sustain growth. That's a pipeline for the future. So Zynga announced at its last uh, investor results presentation on November 4th that it has a multi-year pipeline of new games, sees further acquisition opportunities and raise its full year 2020 revenue guidance by 129 million. So basically, that's all good news for the company. A lot of good projections saying the company is going to grow and grow and grow. Really good news. So my buy, hold, or sell position. Uh, I agree with the bulls on this one. I'm a long-term buy on this company, but, but with a caution. You need to enter this company at the right price. Uh, let me bring up that chart again and, um, and, and look here. So over, let's do over a month. So it broke out... Um, I would keep this on the watch list for about one to two weeks uh, because the stock is highly volatile right now. And I would target a $9 to $10 uh, price point to buy into it. The stock is currently trying to break out of that $10 resistance line. And it's basically almost at an all time high right now. And my, my, uh, my price target would be around $14 a share by the end of 2021. Now, please be aware that there are some factors indicating strength, some showing weaknesses with little evidence to justify the expectations of either a positive or negative performance for the stock relative to most other stocks, but there is a lot of potential. So this is definitely for someone with a slightly higher risk uh, tolerance profile. Now the company's strengths can be seen in multiple areas such as the robust revenue growth, solid uh, stock price performance, and largely solid financial position with reasonable debt levels by most uh, measures. However, as a counter to those strengths, we also find some weaknesses, including deteriorating net income and disappointing return on equity. So be, be, be aware of that. I am betting that the strengths will outweigh the weaknesses in the years to come for Zynga. But hey, what are your thoughts on this stock? Are you a bear or a bull on Zynga? Please leave your comment down below. And so there you have it, folks. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button down below. It definitely helps in the YouTube algorithm. And consider subscribing if you like to hear financial news you can use. And I will be out with you in the next stock update video. Ciao.